How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Saturdays with Jim Valley, 1 p.m. Eastern. And Sundays with me, 6 p.m. Eastern. Happy Sunday, everybody. Boy, what a week. <laughs> what a week. Uh, you know, when I, I, I did Matt Men on Friday, and I had a whole different show planned for everybody on Friday, and then... Everything changed with this latest Vince McMahon allegation. Uh, it's a little bit more than an, an allegation. This, this is this is reality. Uh, we're going to go into that, obviously, and break that down as much as we can. Obviously, some more details have come out since the initial report of what happened about a month ago. Uh, a month ago, it was reported that Vince McMahon had a uh, paid a, 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 a ridiculous amount of hush money to somebody he was romantically involved with within the WWE organization that now spiraled into a a full-fledged multi-party investigation, third-party investigation. I think there's multiple law firms doing this. And uh they discovered four more NDAs and these are these sound way worse than the initial report. So we're going to break that down and kind of figure out what's going on here and, and what the plan for this company is moving forward. You know, th this is the man that built the empire WWE and Vince McMahon are synonymous. It's not like a, a lot of other companies out there where you could just pop in a CEO and, and the investors won't be upset or affected by it. The stock price won't be really too affected by it. These things happen, right? CEOs change in companies, but not a company like this. So we're going to touch on that uh, heavily today and go into that. Also guys, we are taking your questions. Tweet me at Andrew Zarian, ask W O L hashtag, tweet me, and we will do our uh, our best to get to your questions because there is a lot of questions here. I, I already have a full page worth of questions. So we're going to go into that and a whole bunch of other stuff, obviously. SmackDown results, SummerSlam card, and all the latest with AEW, and your questions. Like I said, at the end of the show, guys, Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here, Sunday edition. My favorite day of the week because I'm here doing this with you guys. It's been a rough couple of weeks for me personally. Uh, first of all, I want to I start off by saying thank you to everybody that reached out about uh, my hip. Uh, it definitely means a lot. I got so many messages on, on social media and I got a bunch of emails from you guys wanting to know what's going on. I'm okay. Not doing surgery yet. I they they think I'll I'll heal up. I fractured my hip slightly, but I tore a bunch of stuff on, on my on my left side. So uh, it's been brutal. But I feel like the last couple of days I'm doing a little bit better. So deeply appreciate you guys uh, reaching out. It it definitely means a lot to me. Trust me. Uh, it, it's unbelievable some of the messages I'm getting. Let's talk about this terrible terrible story. Uh, the Vince McMahon allegations. So. A month ago, right? About a month ago, there was a story that came out in the Wall Street Journal that there was an investigation happening for uh, corporate misdeeds, right? I, I guess that was the depth of it initially and brought up investigations, uh, two third-party, I think it's two third-party investigations happening right now. And uh, they're digging in the NDAs and guess what? A bunch of them came out and here is the shocking part, right? This is an astronomical number to pay out. Vince paid out. He agreed to pay more than $12 million over 16 years to four different women within the organization. This includes a $7.5 million settlement to a former WWE wrestler who claimed Vince coerced her into performing uh, acts let's say after she resisted uh further encounters she was demoted and ultimately declined declined to renew her contract in 2005 in 2018 this wrestler and her attorney negotiated a 7.5 million dollar settlement for her silence via an nda think about it this way 7.5 million dollars as far as a settlement, I mean, you know, people know what I do in my, in my, you know, my, my, my main job. I work with a lot of companies. I do PR for them. I deal with, I, I mean, I've seen these scenarios play out 
in many, many corporate environments, big time corporate environments. A $7.5 million settlement is not something you see often. And for something to be kind of swept under the rug like that, it, it is unbelievable to me that this this was kind of hush-hush. Now, you think that's bad, it gets even worse. In 2006, in a 2006 agreement, a former manager, this is who was referred to as a contractor. So, I, I, I listen, I don't know. I don't like, I don't want to dig in to the individuals. Uh, I want to keep... Uh, they're part of the story. Obviously, they need anonymity. They signed an NDA. They're not coming forward with it. And I don't want to out anybody here. So I'm not I'm not going to dig as to who these could be, who it is, what's going on. You know, these are, you don't know what the other party wants out there. 2006 agreement, a former manager. This is who was refer referred to as a contractor who worked 10 years for Vince McMahon, for Mr. McMahon, before he allegedly initiated a relationship. She was paid $1 million to keep it quiet. Continues. All right, let's keep it going. John Laurinaitis was also implicated after a demotion in 2012. I think a lot of people, you know, this rumor was swirling around a little bit at that time. John Laurinaitis was demoted in 2012 when a one when a $1.5 million deal happened. He had an affair with an employee who was demoted after she broke it off and they had to settle for $1.5 million and John Laurinaitis lost his job. It was also implied that he might have been involved with the paralegal from the first story. Now, that was the, that was the, that was the confusing part of the initial story, whether or not the paralegal was in some sort of relationship with John Laurinaitis as well, along with Vince McMahon. There are some parts that came out about the paralegal story that were not really discussed early on. Dave Meltzer did a great job at this. Dave and um, Dave and Garrett were discussing this on Wrestling Observer Radio that came out on Saturday. You could head on over to F4W Online and check it out there. And Dave gave a nice little tidbit that I, I had no idea. Vince uh, did not meet this person at work, the the, the paralegal. The, apparently, the paralegal apparently uh, allegedly lives in the building that Vince McMahon lives in, where he has that penthouse, that ridiculous penthouse in uh, in Connecticut. She apparently lived in the building. They met there. He offered her a job and wanted to give her a salary, wanted to give her a raise up to $300,000. And they, uh, I think he realized, or, or whoever he was speaking to realized what an astronomical increase that is. So they gave her a $100,000 uh, raise. And then she got shipped over to John Laurinaitis' department. So this is a bonkers story. I mean, this is just one re repeat after another. And, you know, this is the, it's, it, I believe it's Trump Towers in New York. It's a New York penthouse he's in. It's not the Connecticut place. Or it could be the Connecticut. I think, I think he has a big place in Connecticut. Um, this is just unbelievable. So this is four that they know of that they've been able to track uh, prior to going public. You know, some of the, you've heard these stories. Uh, you know, we, we've all heard it, and now it's coming to light here. So WWE's initial statement sent to employees was the following. The Wall Street Journal has published a second story with expanded details on the initial WWE report last month. We want to reiterate that we and our board of directors takes these allegations seriously. Uh, we've been co cooperating fully with the investigation led by our board of directors and will continue to do so until the conclusion. Please note that upon its conclusion, WWE leadership will make itself available to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. This was sent out to em all employees. Vince was at SmackDown, by the way, and it was reported to be business as usual. I mean, this is, you know, there's so many twists and turns to this thing, and we still don't really know um, beyond what the Wall Street Journal is saying. We don't know what the, you know, it's not like the Wall Street Journal has direct access to the investigation. There, there has to be more to this that they don't, they're not privy to for a number of reasons. But the other question is, who's leaking this to the Wall Street Journal? I'm curious about that. I, I very much am. Is it WWE? Is it someone on the board? Is it the legal team? Somebody on the legal team for uh, that's investigating. I mean, th these are all questions. So here, here are some questions here. What what is it going to take to remove Vince? 
And should Stephanie be named permanent CEO? Now we're gonna we're gonna continue this also because this is a big, big story. And I want to hear from you guys. Use the hashtag ask W O L and you could tweet me on Twitter right now at Andrew Zarian, and I will do my best to answer all your questions. But this is <laughs> this is wild. So is this gonna remove Vince? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, I, you know what it really comes down to, and, and this is the truth. Uh, for WWE, is their is their stock going to be affected? Is their public perception going to be affected by this? You know, these are all questions that that will impact if they do it. If it was any other company, okay, and this is this is a great example of this. How this is a bizarro universe this company exists in. If it was any other company, the CEO would have been ousted immediately. He would not be allowed to be working there with talent, with staff. And have it quote business as usual, like it's being described. There's, I can't see this being in any other any other company that this plays out, and this is the scenario. But it's WWE and it's Vince McMahon, and really, uh, this is just so weird. The whole thing. I mean, listen, you know, there's a lot to be said. You're you're a powerful man. You're in a position of power. The their future depends on your decision making, not anybody else's. It's still a one man show. There, you hear about it all the time with the writers. These writers are writing for one man with flatulence humor and, and uh, I mean, just it, it is literally for one person at this point. And you cater to him and I, this is what it seems like it has happened. It, you know, you cater to him and you hope that, you know, he likes you. And then occasionally he'll ask something like this, and it's absolutely disgusting and terrible. We're going to come back from this. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. There's a bunch of questions I want to get to regarding this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Hey, now, everybody. Sunday edition. A lot to talk about. Uh, last thing we were talking about Vince McMahon. <laughs> and I think this is going to continue to this because there's a lot to talk about. Oh, man. So, uh, business as usual, like I said, for SmackDown. And, man, it was a weird SmackDown. Do you know how many minutes of wrestling was on that show? I, I couldn't believe it. when I Because I, I watched, you know, I, I, I tend to watch it on Saturday morning. So, I had it on for a little bit, and it was on in the background. You know, it was hard to kind of talk and have a conversation. I had people over. It was a whole thing. So, um, I have it on, and every time I look up, there's no wrestling on the show uh, it, it's a two-hour show i every time i look up at the screen i'm like did i miss something no yeah you know what i did miss 14 minutes of wrestling that's it that's all they had on a two-hour program listen wwe that's the goal right it's it's a little wrestling sports entertainment remember it's not pro wrestling so uh i guess we'll touch on that a little bit but man what a what a 14 minutes of wrestling rampage one hour show. One match had almost as much wrestling as a two hour show did. The Kingston match was lo almost longer. With total in, -run in ring time. Wild. <laughs> it's really insane. <laughs> uh, really insane. Uh, I got a couple questions here that you guys submitted. Uh, if you want to submit your questions, use the hashtag AskWOL. We're going to be doing this throughout the entire show with your questions. Uh, Kenny has a question. Is getting rid of Vince even a possibility? No, it's difficult, right? Because he has majority voting power. Um, you know, it's really going to come down to him deciding when to do it. I, I can't see him getting ousted in a in a in a you know a takeover type way, considering how engraved in the company is. But I do think the best thing to do right now is to step away from this until, uh, you know, it's not distracting. You know what it really comes. You know what it is. Is the product getting distracted by Vince McMahon's uh, sexual deviance, right? Isn't that insane that I have to say that to you guys? <laughs> his his uh, terrible decisions. Uh, will it will should he step down? Well, the company will decide if if it impacts the stock price, the TV, or advertisers, because that that's really who's going to decide this. I always say, and, and this is something I've learned in in everything I do. The sales team runs everything. And if you cannot sell ads for their TV show because of what Vince has done, guess what? Vince will be totally eliminated from everything. He won't be there. 
But to a lot of people within the company, there's nothing new here. These are things that some people know. A lot of people know. You've heard the story. I mean, again, I'm not going to reiterate, but we've all heard the stories over the last 35 years of this company. And I'm not, listen, I don't, we will find out once that investigation is done, right? I'm not, I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm just telling you like it is. I, I, I think it's insane. <laughs> this whole scenario. Never seen a company do this. Wild stuff. So, uh, I, I don't know if this will, if they could get him out. I really don't. Interesting. Here's another question. I wonder if or how much the situation will affect Jerry McDivitt. That's a great question. Is Jerry even going to represent him personally on this? I guess Jerry did, right, with these NDAs. So he would have to be involved. But, you know, a lot of the question is, was did he pay out these NDAs personally or did it come from the company? Uh, these, uh, it, it's, it is a, it is a very bizarre, sticky situation. And we're going to find out more, obviously more information is going to come out here. So we'll, we'll get into that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's go into some fun stuff, <laughs> please. I can't MG you there, right? My producer, uh, Matt's here. Uh, we need to go into some more uplifting stories, right? Does that mean we talk about SmackDown? Let, let's go into SmackDown because that's so uplifting. Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman cut a 14-minute promo that was ultimately in, uh, interrupted by Theory dancing around the ring with his briefcase. Great. Viking Raiders defeated Jinder Mahal and Shanky. Nakamura a lot defeated, of defeated mm -hmm. uh, Kaiser with Gunther on the outside. Corbin was on commentary and tried to explain uh, to do his best Pat McAfee impersonation. You know, this is long-term storytelling because I believe they were on the same team together, right? Uh, back in, yeah, the, the Colts. I think he was just briefly, though. Briefly, brief, yeah, um, very briefly. Yeah, uh, right. So Liv Morgan... Enough to get the, enough to get the photo, photo yeah. op. <laughs> Liv Morgan has an in-ring interview... She, she, I can't see what I'm doing here. Hold on, guys. There we go. Something happened here. Uh, she had an in-ring interview. I, I got, I, you know, I think it's cool that they put the title on her. I don't hate it. I'm not against it. I just think that now in the limelight, you know, you're, you're, you're in a different tier. And I think her promos have to kind of reflect that. And it takes a little while to get to that, especially if you weren't wrestling, uh, in the main picture for a long period of time. I, I, I like that Liv has a title. I don't hate it. Uh, I think it's if they do a transition thing for the title is going to be interesting. Uh, her and Ronda, I, I'm curious to see what they do here for Summer, for SummerSlam. Very, very curious. Ronda Rassi defeated Natalia. The Maximum Models, male models, <laughs> unveiled a 2022 tennis collection. Perfect time for Arthur Ashe Stadium for AEW. This is ridiculous. Okay, next. SmackDown Tag Team Championship contender match. The Usos defeated... Los Lotharios, uh, Drew McIntyre defeated Butch. And this was supposed to be up against Sheamus to determine the challenge. Uh, to determine the challenger at Clash at the Castle. So that was SmackDown. SummerSlam is shaping up also. Last man standing match on Disputed WWE Universal Championship. Roman Reigns against Brock Lesnar. I, I want to take a poll. Right now, right? I got we got a couple hundred people in the chat room. We got a couple hundred people here, a couple hundred people there in the chat. We got multiple chat rooms here. Do you want to see this match with Brock and Roman? I mean, they haven't had a bad match, and, and isn't that amazing? Like they haven't had a bad match. I just don't want to see it. <laughs> you know, I mean, think about that. These are guys that have good matches, and nobody wants to really see. It. Look at this. Nope, 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 nope. You know. Nobody wants to see it. Zero interest. Nope, 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 nope. Heck to a nope. I just want good wrestling and compelling stories, says Vinny. That is a hard thing to request from this company at this point. Uh, based, on, based on the house show, could Natty uh, be added to that SmackDown match? I don't know. Maybe. Pat McAfee, Happy Corbin. Okay, that'll be a good, good show for Pat McAfee. He's excellent in every way. He also signed an extension. New contract, right? Good for him, man. He's working really hard. That he changed that whole commentary team. Revived Michael Cole. He says it himself. United States Championship match. Bobby Lashley defends against Theory. So here's the. So this is interesting, right? Like Theory. 
Theory said that he's going to cash in. Does he win the title and cash in? Now the title's back on him. So when he loses the briefcase, he still has that title. We'll see what happens there. Uh, undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship match. The Usos defend against the Street Profits. Angela Dawkins and Montez Ford. Uh, last week we were talking about how gigantic Montez Ford is. Put on some muscle. He's looking big. Main event run. He's getting ready for that. Singles run. He's getting ready for that. I feel bad for Angelo Dawkins because he's actually not a bad worker. I, I think this is a good tag team. It's just Montez Ford has always been the, the guy in that group that they've 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 focused on. Immediately. As soon as this guy as soon as Montez Ford came to the main roster, I was, immediately I was sold. Like, oh yeah, they had these big plans for him. He's impressive. Other matches likely to be added based on storyline is Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair, Logan Paul and the Miz, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Gunther for the IC title. So that's SmackDown. Uh, that's SummerSlam. So, AEW Rampage, on the other hand, had a had a great match. What did you think of that uh, Eddie Kingston match, MG? Oh, that was awesome. They 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 got a star in uh, Takashita. Is that his name? Yeah, that's they, he's gonna he's gonna be a, he's gonna be an international star. Across, oh yeah, the dude he's he's Japan very and, impressive. You know, it, it's yeah. funny because sometimes and and I think most people watching this and listening to this obviously on the radio will, will agree to this. Sometimes you see somebody, right? Like you just see him mm -hmm. and you're like, holy moly, this guy's great. Like immediately, you know, you know who else I had that for? And you get, you, don't laugh. This is not a joke. When I saw Austin Theory at Evolve, the first time I ever saw him wrestle, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, this kid's, this kid's great. He's going to go somewhere. I mean, this is a very we different comparison, a right? Very different comparison. But sometimes you see somebody and you say, man, this guy has it. Listen, the hair, the look, the body, the height. He worked great with uh, with Eddie Kingston. And you know what? Kudos to Kingston. You know he's banged up after last week. And he went out there and he had a hell of a match. I, I That's another guy, Eddie Kingston. Would have never been in this position in WWE. And he was given the opportunity in AEW because he's so freaking good. And look what he did. He's turned it into a main event positioning. He's in. He's I in the mix. I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, is Eddie Kingston in uh, due for a title run in the next year or so? I don't know. What I title do you is. put on him? You put a. You put the I world title. You put the you world put... title. Absolutely. He is. You know that would that be. Over. Uh, we're coming be, close. It'd be probably transitional, but still. Mm. We're coming close close to a break, but somebody brought this up to me, and, and it's so funny. Somebody, <laughs> somebody uh, over there uh, said to me, he goes, you know. It could be like a Mick Foley type title win and a title run. You know, this guy that was never supposed to be the world champion on a nationally syndicated, a national television show. Uh, you know, the, the this is a guy that uh, a lot would have said he would never be a world champion on a major promotion. And guess what? He's totally capable of doing that. And you know what? Mick Foley, too. Same thing was said about him. Let's, t let's touch on that a little bit, and I want to go into more AEW stories here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here, Sunday edition. Hanging out with you guys. My favorite day of the week. Sundays, because I'm here doing this fantastic show. I personally have been a listener since the IATA days. Think of that. Think about how long ago that was. I had an Iowa... I think Iowa boombox that I connected to my computer and I had it timed out that it would load the real media player and, and record Dave and Brian on IATA. Unbelievable. And now I'm here I am hosting it. Look, your dreams can come true, boys and girls. <laughs> we got a couple more questions here, so I'm going to touch on this. Uh, Pete on Twitter, I believe, says, do you think the leakers going to, the, to Wall Street Journal because they do not feel comfortable with the board making a real decision without any other outside pressure? That's a great question. Uh, I mean, it could be both. I mean, that could be a perfectly reasonable reason to go to the Wall Street Journal, or it could be someone internally and in, on the board themselves going to the Wall Street Journal because they want Vince out. It could be, I, I mean, it could be a numerous amount of things. It could be somebody that's from the from the legal team. It could be someone that's privy to this. It, could, it, it I don't know how Wall, the Wall Street Journal got the story, but it is interesting that they are the ones that got this before there was anything going on. But the story was kind of, in the air since March. 
So a lot of this could have turned over a lot of hands and and then started this derailment of uh, of Vince McMahon in his position. Uh, here's another one, more of a comment, not a question. Nobody should really be shocked by the pattern of behavior due to the unethical and less than above board business practices that have been commonplace for years. I will say that this is a big black eye on the on the company. Yeah, I, listen for us. Yeah, hundred percent. For me, for you, for people listening to this, it is a huge black eye for the company. Huge black eye to Vince McMahon's legacy. It was, you know, this is a guy that has a a not so squeaky clean reputation whatsoever. But I mean, he's really, you know, the expensive Teflon Don. I mean, he's really been able to dodge these over the years. But this may be the moment. You could only get away with something like this for so far, so for so long. But do I think, is it a shocker to us? No, it's not a shocker. Is it a shocker to the casual fan? How about the mom that's taking their, you know, his son or daughter, her son or daughter to, to uh, a WWE event? Is it going to be, is it going to be a, a, a black guy for her? Yeah, I think so. You may be turned off to take your kids to something like this. And I think at the end of the day, unfortunately, I, I, honestly, unfortunately, I think it's really going to come down to business, which says a lot about where we are in corporate America and in, in, in the climate of that company, everything. Here's another one. James Hester on Twitter. Do you think NBC or Fox steps in? I don't. I, I, and on, I, I don't think they do. Or maybe they do if the ads start pulling. You know, it, I, I'm in communication with a lot of those guys, and I haven't heard of any ads getting pulled yet. Maybe this week you'll hear about it, but as of last week, there was nothing that that was alarming. Or I, I mean, I reached out to a bunch of people that I know, and they all they all gave me a shrug. They're like, I don't know, nothing, nothing that that, that we've heard. So I, I think really it's going to come down to what happens. What's the conclusion of the investigation? What people are saying. Um. At the end of the day, that's what what it's going to be. So can they can they get involved? I think they will get involved. That they're losing money because they've invested a ton of money into this company. Very interesting stuff. So uh, keep the questions coming. We're going to do our best to answer them as the show goes along. We got Fighter Fest coming next week. Claudio versus Jake Hager. You know, I got to tell you, Jake Hager is so fascinating to me. You know. I said this on Friday, and people are like, you think Jake Hager's getting a push? I'm like, no, that's not what I said. But look at Jake Hager in WWE, right? They 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 gave this guy the title, went nowhere. They, they made him into this Olympic, you know, Olympic level, uh, Greco-Roman, uh, you know, actual amateur wrestler, great background, didn't go anywhere. They tried. They tried for a bunch. Didn't really go anywhere. He leaves, goes and starts doing MMA. Does really well in Bellator, goes to AEW, and he's a really good uh, guy to be to be there in the background. He's had some pretty decent moments in that company, and and he doesn't really do anything. But I think he goes a long way, and it really shows you how you how you handle somebody. If you have him do st stupid stuff, then he's going to look like an idiot. He really doesn't look like that in AEW. So I'm looking forward to this match. If this was, I mean. Claudio versus Jake Hager is a WWE uh, match, main event match on main event, right? On their B or C show or C or D show, whatever you, it's it's main event still, right? They don't have another one. Yeah, it's main event. It, it would be like on superstars. It would be Jake Hager and Claudio and nobody would care. But because of two weeks of build, people are like, okay, you know what? I kind of want to see Claudio and Jake. I'm into that. Anna J, Serena Deeb, AEW World Tag Team titles on the line. Young Bucks versus uh, Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee, along with uh, Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. Christian interview, Luchasaurus in action, all set up for next week. Also on Rampage next week, Rampage Fighter Fest, you're going to see Lee Moriarty and... Jonathan Gresham, Ring of Honor world title. This is a good introduction to that title, to the audience again, because there's a pay-per-view coming up in a couple of weeks. Private Party, Lucha Brothers also, and the Gun Club interview. 
Uh, week two so far for Fighter Fest, we have Kingston, Jericho. Look, okay, MG. <laughs> the gimmick on top of the gimmick on top of the gimmick, right? Kingston, Jericho, barbed wire death match with the Jericho Appreciation Society being suspended in a shark cage. What? What do you think of that? This is sports entertainment at its maybe at its best, I guess. I don't. Know. I mean, is it? But well, wait a minute, is it sports entertainment or are we going to like Mid South now? Is this like yeah, are we are yeah. we in Mid South with is, the shark cage or well, or? Well, that's you know, essentially that kind of gimmick came out of there, right? So yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, I'm into it. <laughs> Would this be okay? Here's another question, and this is a great question for you because you you do all our research here. Um, mm -hmm. Which I don't think people know that. Uh, our producer, Matt, he does all the research for the show. He makes my life so much easier when I'm like, hey, listen, can you look this up for me and just double check for me? And he, he gets it all done during the show. It's wild. Uh, is this the first barbed wire match on national television in North America? On national television? Um, it would have to oh, be. I imagine. Well, are you talking about ECW? Because I'm pretty sure they had. So, I don't think they had any. Well, does that count? They didn't. Did they have any? Did they have a bar wire match on TV? Mm, they had born question. to be wired, right? That that was a I that was a that was a TV that wasn't a TV thing. That was a VHS exclusive. Right, right. I wonder how much uh, barbed wire we're actually going to see. I, I we'll have to see if it's going to be I like know, the uh, listen, like the exploding death match was, or is it going to <laughs> forget be about more that? We down? we got to see fluorescent tubes. <laughs> You know, <laughs> in a main event, fluorescent tubes mm -hmm. on national TV. I think Revolution cutter. did a bar wire match last year. Yeah, but I'm saying national TV. I, I'm not. I'm not going into pay per views. Uh, I'm going. Uh, mm -hmm. Hardcore TV did have a bar wire match for ECW. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I wanted to say there was one in there somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shane in the chat goes, Adrian, how come Matman hasn't been posting content on F4W? I, I think it should be there. I posted it last week. Friday should be up there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, okay, cool. It's a gimmick on top of a gimmick. I think it'll be a good match. I think Kingston and Jericho. Jericho's, it, this is like his Terry Funk era. This guy's middle-aged and deranged, right? Love it. I, I'm into it. And also, we're going to get uh, Orange Cassidy. Uh... Oh, that's that's a mistake. That oh, should have been in the other Thank part. Th of course. <laughs> Thanks. We got a result. Orange Cassidy make defeated at least Tony Nese in two weeks. <laughs> Did you guys know that? On July 20th, not previously. Don't, don't, this never, this did not happen on TV. On July 20th, Orange Cassidy is going to defeat Tony Nese. Look at this. This happens. On my Carson. Thank you for uh, messing up the notes there. Very much appreciate it. <laughs> I do at least once. <laughs> uh, let's see a couple more questions. Balor Club guy, regular here for us. Happy Sunday, Andrew. Uh, I'm sure you already know my question. When will AEW announce ticket sales and date for all out? I think they did. They did announce the date for the event. Uh, I think we could all assume comfortably that it's going to be at the Now Arena. And I would imagine the tickets have to go on sale very soon because they're going to have this and they're going to have Arthur Ashe to sell. And those are back-to-back -back shows, you know, a couple of weeks in between. And that's that's a lot of tickets you're going to have to sell. you got to sell at least 10,000 tickets for whatever it is, 11,000, 10,000, September 4th. And in, on, on September 21st, you're going to have to go and sell another 20,000 tickets. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of tickets, so you got to give it time. I, I'm not, I, I don't think there'll be any issues with the Chicago show. Uh, I, I don't see there being issues for, uh, you know, not selling out. I don't see there being issues for, uh, well, actually, Arthur Resch is going to be interesting, right? It's the second time in that market. Uh, that is That is literally my backyard. I'm seven minutes away. Very easy for me to go. I know it was a disaster for a lot of people to commute, but I think a lot of people learned their lesson. And, and when I spoke to people within Arthur Ashe uh, regarding this a couple of weeks ago before the announcement, I was told that they're very much aware of the concession issues and, and the paying issues. They just, the, the company that they hire to run the concessions that run it for, I think it's Levy Group, I think. Uh, they run it for the US Open. They just didn't, they just didn't know what to expect. And it was an oversight, and I, I was told that they they don't expect these issues to happen. So we'll see what happens there. But they got a lot of shows to sell, which is cool. 
A couple more questions here. Uh, I'm sure you... When are you going to hope for a meeting? I don't know if I'm going to be at All Out because of my hip. That was the second part, if I'm going to be at All Out. I don't know yet. I'll find out. We'll find out in a couple weeks. How long do you see Liv Morgan remaining champion? Listen, Liv and I are cool. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to rag on Liv. No, I hope she has a good run. I, you know, this could be a transition title thing. Uh, I hope not. I'd like to see her with the title. I'd like to see him finally, you know, give her that push and see what she could do. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you at least gave her the opportunity to make it happen. And for someone that's been there and has worked hard and has kind of gotten pushed and taken back and pushed and taken back, I think this is a good opportunity for her to kind of shine a little bit. You kind of want to see that. Uh, any news on the uh, about ROH TV? I would love to see them on TBS at 6.05 on Saturdays. Man, wouldn't that be great? Put them on at 6.05 on a Saturday? I'm into that. Uh, I know that they were, they were, they're working on it. I think this is the first step here, right? Because they will be on BR Live. So this is a addition to it. And this is something I said last week on the show where there, there are people within, I guess, the Discovery Warner organization that want more pay-per-views from them. Because think about the revenue you could generate. 100,000 buys times 50 divided by two, right? Essentially, 60-40 split, 50-50 split, whatever you're going to do with that. That's a lot of, that's a lot of buys, now, I don't know if they're doing 100,000 on there every time, right? Because it, it gets split between fight and this and that, but uh, that's a lot of money for them to generate, and why wouldn't they want that? Easy breezy. Wrestling Observer Live. We're going to come back and wrap up the show here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Final segment of the show. Very much enjoying my Sunday today. You can follow me on Twitter, guys, at Andrew Zarian. Obviously, you can follow Wrestling Observer and uh, F4W on Twitter as well. We're everywhere podcasts are available now. You can find the show on Spotify. You can find it on iTunes. We're everywhere now. Maybe I had a little something to do with that. I like to tell Tony that. I like to, I like to call up Tony and tell him constantly how I've been such an asset to this company. Uh, there's a couple, me- couple more stories here that I wanted to touch on very quickly. Uh, Pac and Shota Umino All Atlantic title match to air on AEW Dark this Tuesday Definitely check it out, I think that's going to be a fantastic match Brody King attacked Darby out At a Seattle autograph Signing as well, Darby did Did a four signing Did a four signing After going four through hours. a table A four hour signing after going through <laughs> the table Thank you, MG Geek, our, our <laughs> producer that messes up The notes every week <laughs> Uh, FTR and the Briscoes title match has been made official for ROH Death Before This Honor. And they announced the card so far. You're going to have uh, ROH World Television Championship, Samoa Joe and Jay Lethal, ROH Tag Titles, FTR and the Briscoes, ROH Pure Title on the line with Wheeler Yuta versus Daniel Garcia. And uh, a couple more matches will be happening. Bleach Report will be carrying it, but order information has not been released yet. I did not go crazy. People are like, what are you talking about? It's on BR Live. It's not a, they never announced. I'm like, I think they did. My like, Karnak, the, the, what is it? Karnak, the, the, the magician, Karnak, the, the wizard. I'm just going to do Carson for the rest of the show. Uh, <laughs> but all right, cool. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this show, this Ring of Honor show. Maybe, maybe it'll look a little different, huh? Maybe this will kickstart everything. Maybe they'll announce something about TV there. We'll find out. Guys. I had a blast with you, and I'll see you all next week on Wrestling Observer Live here on Sunday. Take care.